the time we're in, uh, it's privacy and data are so immense. Um, the internet has hit us like a thunderbolt. We didn't really think of privacy and data 20 years ago, but now it's huge. Uh, in terms of uh, the oncoming GDPR, I mean, is it serendipity that the chief privacy officer of IBM happens to be a European? <laughs> well, I think is 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 a strong message from the company. Uh, I I really feel to be a, a European. I'm Italian, but I, I always define myself as a European. And having the responsibility globally, I believe, means and having invested with this responsibility, it's a message from IBM in terms of uh, recognizing the importance of uh, balancing and leveraging uh, the IBM uh, capability in Europe. Europe is an is a is a geography where we have been since. Uh, 100 years uh, and we have a sizable uh, operation both in terms of people and, and, and investments of, on uh, various headquarters. Watson uh, IoT just opened in Munich uh, a few months ago. So I think it's important as a message and is a, a design, let's say, uh, point. It's not just a coincidence. And I really feel proud of having the possibility to um, lead the company through these very challenging journey with my background and my understanding so deep uh, uh, of uh, the European issues. And in terms of uh, GDPR, I mean, <clears throat> are you, are you, do you get the feeling that businesses are aware, or I mean, they are aware of it, but are they ready for it? Well, let's make in maybe a, a distinction between IBM and the external uh, world. In IBM, for sure, we had an history uh, with privacy. I mean, we were very, very first, I mean, uh, to, to start with, with this journey uh, decades ago. And so there is uh, an understanding and, and, a, and a culture around the protection of data. And the, the effort we are making now is, the, is to enhance that, let's say, culture to turning it from a purely compliance aspect, which remains as such, but also to a great opportunity of really making ourselves the trusted providers for customers. In the market, I see uh, GDPR as a great opportunity to make exactly this cultural shift and making privacy more understandable, more um, leveraged as, as an opportunity to, to improve the way we protect data, rather than perceived as a very niche area that is only for technical experts. So I think it's a great opportunity, GDPR, in that sense. When you say opportunity, that's very interesting because you know, it's been presented by a lot of quarters as a lot of onerous work for companies to take on board, but do you see it really as an opportunity for companies to get best practice? I wouldn't deny that, that there is complexity around the implementation of GDPR, but I truly believe it's an opportunity because the world is, is built and fueled by data. So we must find ways to have an enhanced uh, level of responsibility, accountability, and processing of the data. So without GDPR, which is creating an harmonized level of you know, grounds for, for, for uh, those uh, technical in, in, in the world, as we are as tech companies, but also for you know, uh, customers and also for data subjects, I think we would not achieve in, in, a, in, a, in an expedited way uh, a common ground for, for the next digital uh, evolution of the world. One of the interesting things, we're here in Dublin and across the river there we've got Google, we've got Facebook, we've got, uh, Ireland has found itself to be on the stage when it comes to a lot of debates in recent years and we saw the establishment of safe, uh, the, the safe harbour disappearing replaced by Privacy Shield, that debate seems to have been overtaken now by GDPR. When it comes to Europe's relationship with the states and other, other, other trading blocks, how do you think we are fixed when it comes to privacy in terms of um, how companies, not only are places cooperating, but the overall sacrosanct or nature of people's private privacy and data. I believe there is the tendency of believing that there is a contraposition, so a contrast between the US and Europe. Uh, and, and this historically has been probably due to the fact that there were indeed different systems. But there is an effort, and I believe very much on the effort and the uh, activities that will be done and are currently done to preserve the communication and the cooperation. We cannot exist, we cannot survive this transformation and digital evolution without having the flow of data between uh, you know, Europe and US. So we need as uh, stakeholders, uh, political parties and companies, uh, uh, we really need to invest and make sure that this dialogue continues and that the mechanisms we have in place currently continue to, uh, to be reliable for, for both parties, Europeans and Americans. So removing a bit the barrier and bridging between the two worlds for the good of the society and for the good of uh, you know, also the, the, the geographical flow of data. Very good, thank you very much, that was great.